What up y'all, it's your boy Home Team here and I'm back with another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And what I want us to do is I want us to delve into some discussion. I want to learn from you guys. I want you guys to learn from me. So, you know, let's just remember to let's put these pieces back together and remember to subscribe, comment below, and trust me, there are going to be many more videos to come. What I want to talk today about was Sunday at Akita. Now, before I talk about Sunday at Akita, I want to talk about my last video I did on Mansa Musa. Now, remember I talked about the griots and the oral historians, how these griots would basically record their history orally in the Malayan kingdom. And many African kingdoms and people used to record their history orally because it was a part of who they were. They viewed history as kind of like a blueprint to their future. And so they would record their oral, their oral history and they would even have ceremonies called the Kamabalone ceremony in Mali today in which this ceremony would last for days, literally. And what they would do is what these griots would record their history orally and they would talk about their history, they would recite it to their people and they would have many cultural traditions concerning you know their history so it just goes to show that you know the history to African people was a part of their everyday lives and who they were and they kind of set the standard of um, their past to just catapult them to the future and to advance them through those means so scholars look at them today and say you know these these griots man like these oral historians in Africa like we can't take these dudes seriously because they didn't write anything down and that's based on, you know, Western scholars or European scholars because today we go to school, we write down, we look in a history book and we're like, okay, this is what happened in the past. But it's not really a part of who we are and a part of our lives. But with the Malayan kings, with the Malayan people, it's, it was part of them. It's part of who they were. So we got to keep that in mind when we talk about Mali and these griots. And what these scholars would do is they would talk about, you know, these griots and they would see the story of Sendieta Kita by this dude, Ibn Khaldun. And he was an Arab historian and he was a traveler, he was a scholar. And what Ibn Khaldun would do was he would talk about Sendieta Kita. And the Western scholars would be like, yo, okay, this dude was a real guy. He really did do some great things. And he was the founder of the Malayan Kingdom, which took over after the Ghana Empire. So the scholars today, they, they try and decipher whether the story or the epic of Sunday at Akita was history or just mysticism. And a lot of them say, oh, it's a lot of mysticism in there. Like, why is there so much mysticism? But we have to understand that the mysticism is a part of the history because the mysticism is part of how the people felt in those times about this guy Sunday at Akita. He was the founder of the Malayan people. So, of course, there's going to be uh just great feelings about this dude Sandieta and who he was what he was about what he did for his people so there is some history involved as well and the arab historians like um ibn khaldun and ibn batuta they would pretty much testify to the story of sandia Akita. so basically i want you guys to check out these um these arab historians and let's delve into sandia Akita and his epic before I talk about Sunday and his epic, actually, I want to talk about um, the Malayan Kingdom in general. These these scholars, like Ivan Matuta, they would talk about the Malayan Empire, and they would talk about how, you know, these guys were. There were some good elements to them and some bad elements to them. Now, Ivan Matuta in particular would talk about how the Malayan women were so beautiful, and how they were so dedicated to Islam and nobody in their kingdom would fear any death or harm or robbery and things of those nature and we can tell that you know this guy was telling the truth because he was objective because he would say some terrible things about you know the Malayan people as well he'd be like yo I don't I don't, dis I don't agree with how you know the Malayans would throw dust on their head in honor of the king like that's ridiculous like that's way too much and so we see kind of an objective look and a fair you know a fair shape on um these Malayan people by Ivan Batuta 
so he we can kind of take his word as as some truth we can understand you know what the times were like in the Malayan kingdom and how it was how organized it was the Malayan kings were, were about so I encourage you guys again you guys need to look up these Arab scholars Ibn Battuta, Ibn Khaldun they have some positive things to say they have some negative things to say so you guys be the judge of that so the epic of San Diego goes a little like this San Diego's father he was a king of of Mali pretty much or he was a king of that region not because Mali wasn't formed yet so basically the, what we know about this guy was that he was an attractive dude like he was very handsome and that's one of the main things that we learn about him he was in his kingdom someday and uh, a hunter came up to him a divine hunter apparently and the, this divine hunter said to him yo if you marry an ugly woman one day you're gonna have a strong king of a son and the king was just like what like that don't even make any sense so he disregarded him right so because First of all, he already had a wife. He already had a son. So he was just like, all right, whatever. So one day this woman comes into his court and she's apparently the ugliest woman anybody has ever seen. Like she was ugly. They, she was so ugly they called her like the Buffalo woman. So the Buffalo woman comes into his court and apparently the king remembers what this divine hunter had to say, right? So he was just like, okay, let me try out. Let me try this out, see what happens. So he marries the buffalo woman, the ugliest woman he has ever seen in his life. He marries her, they have a son. This son is Sundia Takita. Now Sundia Takita comes out crippled or disabled and you know he can't walk. So basically the people, his brothers from you know his father's other wives, his brothers, his sisters, all the people in that kingdom would talk about him and discuss how terrible his mom is and how ugly and how she just looks like the worst thing ever and they were going his mom they were going him constantly all the time so basically this seriously had a a deep impact on Sunday at Akita and it affected him negatively so basically his mom really tried to protect him from from all of that because you know it was it had a terrible effect on him so what she did was she went to another kingdom and she she goes to this, this kingdom and apparently the king likes Sundiata so much he likes his tenacity he likes his courage that you know he placed him he made him a leader amongst his people so Sundiata after some time hears about the king of Sosa and um, the Ma Mandinka peoples where he's from his people are all the Mandinka so basically the Mandinka are suffering at the hands of King Sosa. Now, what King Sosa would do was he would come into the Mandinka territory. So after he dominated, basically, the King Sosa was just like, yo, I'm ruler of you people, the Mandinka, and ain't nothing you can do about it, pretty much. So the Mandinka was like, yo, we need to find our boy Sandieta again because, you know, he was a beast, even though, you know, they were making fun of him and stuff like that. But, yo, they was just like, yo, we got to find um, uh, Sandieta. Um, we think he's in the kingdom of Mima. They go to Sunyeta and they're like, yo, can you please come back, help us out? Like, we need your help, please. And so, Sunyeta was just like, all right, I'm gonna go over there. You know, you are my people, so I'm gonna try and help y'all out. So, you know, King Mima was so impressed by Sunyeta and he admired him so much that he gave this, this dude, Sunyeta, an army. So Sunyeta had an army, he went back to the Mandinka kingdom and he went up to King Sosa and he beat him in a battle. The battle was called the Battle of Karina. And this battle, uh, King Sosa was killed, Sandieta was victorious and everybody was happy pretty much. And that's that's pretty much the story of Sandieta Kita. Um, I encourage you guys to learn some more. I encourage you guys to leave some comments down there and to just really put these pieces back together help me put these pieces back together and help us to, put, to bring these pieces back together because we need to learn about this history we need to learn more about africa know thyself remember your ancestors peace <laughs>
I'm a, 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 I'm a,